All right, Tom, we got a quick movie review. Mm-hmm. Uh, you and I had talked about this movie. It's something that kind of stuff with us. I don't know about you. I'm a big fan of Paul Giamatti. I think he's just got a certain way with his delivery. He's just got a way to kind of like grab the screen and just kind of like mm-hmm. get – he speaks to you. He just – every time he talks, I'm just like, I just want to listen to this guy talk. Mm-hmm. You know, he's just got a certain unique way of delivering his dialogue. Uh, but The Holdovers came out uh, earlier this year. We do know Paul Giamatti is Last being- year. Was, oh, yeah, last year. Sorry, last year. Sometime last year, yeah. But Paul really Giamatti is actually up for a Best Actor nomination mm-hmm. with the Oscars. Mm-hmm. And so I was really intrigued by this. I mean, now when I watched the trailer, I was like, this looks like a very art house type of like independent mm-hmm. film. You know, I know it's kind of, probably going to be kind of a slow burn. But what I did not expect, dude, was just how funny this movie is at times. Mm-hmm. Like, early on, the writing is very snappy. Yeah. It's very snappy, and, like, it really gives Paul Giamatti an opportunity to just make you laugh. Like, with his delivery, again... This guy is a cranky professor or teacher at like this very posh like prep school, and he's he's not liked. He's not. <laughs> mm-hmm. None of the students like him. He's kind of a son of a bitch, mm-hmm. but you just know there's there's got to be more to him. Mm-hmm. He's he's very uh, against certain types of kids. Mm-hmm. He understands a lot of these kids are fucking entitled pricks, mm-hmm. and he can't and he stand them. them. And he tells him that. Mm-hmm. And so you're just kind of wondering, like, what is this guy's deal? Like, why is he just so hard on people? And eventually you do find out later on what is kind of the driving cause bef- behind that. And that's where this movie, like, really shines. Because, first of all, it starts off, again, there's a lot of humor. Mm-hmm. There's some character development kind of get an idea who the kids are. Because, basically, he's this teacher who gets, he gets held over uh, to stay back during Christmas break. Because there's obviously some kids that don't have anywhere to go. They can't go back home. Their parents are out of the country or whatever. So they got to stay on campus. So you got to have a teacher stay back. And so he's the one that's assigned this task. He's not happy about it. He doesn't get along with the kids very well, though, especially the ones that he has that he's watching. And uh, Crash's Holdovers was incredible. An instant classic, such a well acted and well written story. I adored the connection between the central three characters. Yes, uh, Angus, Mary, and uh, Paul Hannum. Um, you felt their bond grow through. I mean, look, here's the thing. These three characters are all very unique in their own way, but they're also very connected. Mm-hmm. Uh, each of them is dealing with something that has traumatized them, that has made life very difficult for them, and it's something they can't quite get, you know, shake off and move on from. And in the darkness, they are each other's light. They really are. They, the they really the are. They they, they kind of lean on each other. They mm-hmm. kind of give each other, you know, uh, support, and in that way, they they're able to kind of move forward and, and deal with their their inner struggles. But dude, like I said, man, like it's just this is Paul Giamatti's movie. Mm-hmm. You know, don't don't get me wrong. I think Divine Joy Randolph is great as Mary, and she has some very great scenes. She's basically the cook at this school. Her her son died uh, in in the war at the time, and so like she's grieving through this process. Um, and then you got Angus, who's the student. He's got stuff going on with his family, especially with his dad, and how his mom has kind of like handled that situation. So you, and then obviously with Paul, you find out what his backstory was and it's just, dude, it's just, but again, it's all, this is an acting tour de force by Paul Giamatti. Yeah. I thought he was fucking incredible in this movie. Uh, the kid playing Angus, he's, he, he holds his own. He does okay. But it's just every time you're watch, you watch this, you're watching this for Paul Giamatti. Mm-hmm. And dude, I thought this was a great movie. It's just, it's, it's, it starts off with some good humor. Like I said, snappy writing, but then when it kind of like explores everyone's backstory, that's where like the emotional part of the movie hits, and it's very effective. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I um, uh, so I'm gonna probably go in a little bit of a different direction on this one, um, because the one word that keeps popping into my mind that I feel about it is that it's very raw. It is, and I will be very transparent about this. This movie made me pretty emotional at times. Oh, and because it was really dusty, and I was still sick. Uh, yeah, 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 totally. One of my all-time favorite movies is uh, a movie called Dead Poet Society, and I got a lot of vibes oh, yeah. of that through this. Um, I also love another movie called Renaissance Man yeah. with Danny DeVito, mm-hmm. and of course, you know, all of them. You've got you know Danny DeVito, you've got uh, Robin Williams, you got some great funny and levity, but um, this this movie kind of pulled some of those strings that those movies typically pull for me, especially Dead Poet Society. Dead Poet Society is something yeah. like if I'm if I'm watching that, typically I gotta watch it long because I want people to see me bawling like a bitch. Because <laughs> I will. Like that movie really fucking grips me hard. Um and this movie did that for me as well too because 
as you're starting out, like you're saying, you're seeing that you're seeing kind of the funny. You're starting to see like the archetypes of the characters mm-hmm. and things like that. And I was quite surprised that it, it narrowed down as fast as it did. Truth be told, but once it did, I I, I got why. It Are you talking work. about when they, all the kids go on the ski right? Trip? Everybody yeah. takes off on the ski trip and things like that. And you know, I'm, I'm I'm watching this movie and I'm just I don't know why or what it was, but. There are times in storytelling in movies like this where, again, it goes back to being raw, where it's so just fucking absolutely real. It's written so strongly. Relatable in ways. Yeah, yeah. Like, when you take a character like um, Hamon at first, is it Hamon, right? Uh, Hamon, Ham- Hamon, 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 Hamon. Yeah, whatever. Hamon, Hamon, uh, Hamon. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> um, and, and at first, he's going to be the dick teacher, and you're watching this movie, you're like, fucking, I, I can already see where it's going to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't like the guy, right? But then you start peeling back the layers, yeah. and you're seeing how fucking vulnerable he is, yep. and he's trying not to do that. And the more and more you get whittled away at it, the more and more he's openly revealing his vulnerability. Yes. You don't see a lot of movies these days, I feel like, like just written so well like this where it does engage you because you're actually in real time getting to see these characters like evolve and do that. Mm-hmm. And and for whatever reason, like I said, those movies always kind of like grip me a little bit harder and kind of get me in like a, I don't know if it's a, if it's an emotional state or if it's a mental state, I don't know what it was. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I'm very fortunate with like growing up with my high school teachers that I was really close to some of them. We grew up in a small school. So like yeah. some of these teachers were like, even nowadays, like when I see them, I, I consider them friends. They don't want me to call them by their last name anymore. You know, these are people like I see in a character like this, maybe not in the bitter sense and all this stuff, but like you, 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 you start to realize when you get to know those teachers past just being your teacher, yeah. that they are a person as well too, because mm-hmm. you start to kind of have that, you know, emotional tie there. And that's how I felt kind of with this as well too. Like he's just a, a grizzled old guy that's had a shitty fucking life yeah. to him. It's a perfect life. Right. But then because of the antics of this kids, he's starting to realize that, you know, maybe he's looking at things through the wrong scope. Yeah. And, you know, all three of the characters start to see that through each other, mm-hmm. through, through their through the way they spend time with each other. So it's a very heartfelt, heartwarming. Is there some great levity in it? Absolutely. There's some fun spots and things like that as well, too. <laughs> some spots where I right? seriously busts out loud because, like, man, he is yeah. a prick. There, man. there is some funny shit going on as well, too, because Paul, listen, Paul is a fucking an amazing actor. Yeah. He he can do all of it. Um, and at the end of the day, when this movie rolled, I was just like, that was some. Of the, I felt like that was some of the best time I had spent watching a movie. I kept looking at the time. I'm like, I didn't because I didn't want the movie to end. Yeah, yeah. I kept looking, and it, it's a it's a two hour movie. So for some folks, that's going to be a long burn for that kind of storytelling. Cause right. It, like I said, it's not for everybody. Right. But like for me, I was just like, I didn't I didn't want it to end. And man, yeah, it, I see why people are winning awards off this one. I, I I'm really impressed with this writing and knowing that it came out in 2023, this is probably now in like my top three of movies that came out last year. I know right that's now. what, yeah, that's, and that's why we're like, we're trying to go back and check with film because there were so many movies came out last year. So mm-hmm. many good movies that we were like, man, we got to check this out. Cause this is probably gonna be what our audience is going to watch. Mm-hmm. We won't be able to talk about, it. but mm-hmm. you go back and you revisit some of these gems that kind of slipped yeah. under the radar. And then you see, you know, golden globe nominations come up, Paul Giamatti Oscar. And I was like, fuck, okay, I got to yeah. watch this fucking movie. So I'm glad I did. It's an excellent movie. Paul Giamatti is a tour de force. He does a fantastic job. He he, he shows that he just has incredible range. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and everyone else is involved. Like I said, this is a trio of performers who have a great way of like uh, conveying certain feelings and, 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 and how certain events have traumatized them and how everyone reacts a little bit differently to certain mm-hmm. trauma, uh, traumatic experiences. And it was just, uh, it's a great flick. It's a great flick. So if you're ever sitting around and, you're just looking for something to chill and think about and enjoy. Uh, the Holdovers is a fucking awesome, it, awesome choice. Hits them all for me. Big, big fan. So make sure you check it out. If you do watch, if you have watched The Holdovers, if you got thoughts on it, let us know in the comments below. Let us know what you liked about it, what you loved about it. What did you think of Paul Giamatti's performance? How do you think everyone else held up against him? I think everyone else did pretty good. But this is for, for me. This is his show. This is his movie. Mm-hmm. This is his showpiece, and he fucking crushed it. Mm-hmm. Let us know what you thought of The Holdovers.